Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Credit Chat. I'm Rod Griffin, Senior Director of Consumer Education and Advocacy for Experian. Uh, Chandra Sumrafab, thanks for joining me here. Super Rosie 70, uh, Ishad 77, Kawhi B. Angela, thanks for being here. Good to see you all. Minister Dave, Ms. ZD4, always great to see you. Uh, Sissy Yak J. I hope you're all doing well and are well uh, and staying safe and, and working to maintain all of the standards around social distancing and the things that we're facing. Um, really uh, interesting times we're in. So, you know, we're staying in. I think I've been out of outside my house twice in the last three weeks. So <laughs> um, beyond my yard. So um, long time. Andrew, absolutely not. I'm glad you're here. I, one of the things that's great about this is an opportunity for us to all talk uh, and ask questions to help each other through this time. So I really in, enjoy this anyway. So absolutely glad to see you. Hope you have questions. I always enjoy the challenging questions too. I usually enjoy them and do my best to answer them. Um, so we'll keep working on that. Um, and I'm here to answer your questions about credit reporting and credit scoring and fraud and ID theft. And we have all of the things that are happening with COVID-19 uh, and trying to make sure that we're protecting our finances, keeping track of our credit, making sure that it's going to be there to work for us when we get through all of this. Excuse me. And we know we will get through this and it will be there uh, and be able to help us get back on our feet. That's the goal. So maintaining conversation, keeping track of what we're doing, helping answer your questions as we go through this is my objective. So thank you all for being here. Peachley Written, thank you. Um, Dan the Wise 185, your credit dropped 90 points, uh, credit score. Um, you know, I guess the question is what happened? I mean, there are lots of things that can go on. Uh, you know, I tell, I've told everybody here that's here regularly over the holidays, my score dropped 40 points just because I used a credit card as I traveled and was with family and uh, paid for dinner and gas and all of the things we did. So the, the balance on that card went up significantly uh, because I used it because of a, it's it's really safer uh, it was for me when I traveled. So that utilization rate change caused my score to come down, paid it off in January, my scores have come back up. Um, and so we're continuing to see, and you will see up and down, 90 points suggest maybe a bit more, I don't know exactly, but if you have any idea of maybe what's happened, have you used a card, have you, um, you know, taken on more debt, have you missed a payment, have you, um, and perhaps used multiple cards because those are the two things that I always go to because they're the most important. Your payment history and your utilization rate could be other things as well. Uh, so get that credit report. You've got the score. Look at the risk factors that you should have gotten with it. They'll tell you what you need to, to look at in your particular score. You should be able to tell almost right away what affected the score and be able to point to that in your history. Um, and everybody's unique. So, uh, Navio, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Um, just want the old stuff off your report. And that, and Angela, it just takes time. Uh, and, you know, and, it, and when you think about old stuff or when you say old stuff, I guess my question is, how old is it? You know, so you're looking at, you know, if you have accounts that are paid off in full, never been late, keep in mind they're going to stay for 10 years from the paid date. So that's a good thing. Uh, they would keep the positive information longer. If you have late payments, they're going to stay for seven years from the date of the missed payment. Unless you became late and never caught up, an account was charged off and it fell off the report, or pardon me, was reported as charged off and went to collections, then seven years from that very first missed payment, after which you were never current again, those accounts will be paid off. So you know, keep that in mind uh, and look at those. You should be able to either see or calculate your original delin delinquency date when that account first became late. And after that, it's seven years. Uh, paying an account doesn't cause it to be deleted right away. So things that people may not be aware of. So give me a chance to talk a little bit about the, these kinds of things. So if you pay an account, the status of that account should be updated to show it that it's paid. That's considered what we call a final status. It's no longer active, but you would still see that paid account until either if it was charged off or had been delinquent at the time it's paid off seven years from that paid date or from the original delinquent state. Now I'm going to confuse you. I'm sorry. Uh, so if you have an account paid it in full, it should be reported as paid. If it's been late seven years from the date of that missed payment, that missed payment would fall off. 
if everything else is current, it could stay for 10 years then from that from the paid date. But the late payments would fall off, so it's going to be positive. If you were uh, had fallen behind, never caught up, but paid it off and it was delinquent at the time uh, you paid it off, then the account will fall off seven years from the original delinquency date, the date it first became late, was never again current. If you have an account charged off as a loss, it's sold to collections seven years from that original delinquency date of the first debt, the first account. It will the first account and the delin the collection account. I'm having trouble today. Collection account will fall off. So those are kind of the time frames that you're looking at. Uh, the further in the past that those delinquencies occur, those late payments, if there are any, the less effect they have. So always remember that too. Even though they're on the report. They may be having or will be having less and less effect the further in the past they occurred. So your scores may start to climb uh, over time too. So um, that's kind of you know the, the situation. If there are things that are inaccurate, you were never late. Counts not yours. It's a result of fraud. Please dispute those uh, as such uh, using the dispute system. That will help. If you have documentation, that can always help too. So um, give it time. Uh, because time is kind of the key if the information is accurate. Um, you know, it's hard to be more helpful than that, but as you're doing you know, other things and continue to make those payments and keep your debt slow, you'll see him, see improvement. Uh, so, Angela, I hope that's helpful and helpful to other people as well. Uh, understanding when information is reported, when it comes off a report can be really confusing, and, and I understand that. Um, Ashad77, have a credit card not reporting. What can you do? It's on there but not reporting um so if you have an account showing your report i'm not sure and just to clarify what you mean by not reporting if it's showing in the credit report it's reported to us the question is are they updating information uh, so talk to your lender because if they're reporting it to us if you're making payments and making uh, charges with that account they should update the those payments once a month so talk to the lender First and foremost, because it sounds like they're reporting to us, it's just not maybe not being updated. Uh, the other thing to look at is what's the payment status of that account? Does it show that it's open, that it's active, uh, that it's in repayment, those kinds of terms? If it's a credit card, it should just say open. Um, and so that sh if it's open, it should be reporting. Now, another thing that's kind of related is if you have a new account, and it, you've just opened the account, it usually takes 30 to 45 days for that account to first be reported to us because that's when the first billing cycle will end and that's when the lender will report the account for the first time. So, you know, if you're just opening an account, again, this may not be your case, but it gives me a chance to kind of, if people are in the situation, it's related. Uh, you know, it, it, the new account will take 30 to 45 days to show up in your report because the lender reports the account at the end of the first billing cycle. So once it's added to your report, credit scores may not recognize that account for three to six months because they're looking not only for the presence of the account in the report, but also activity in that account. So they need three to six months of activity for traditional FICO scores. Uh, Vantage score with Vantage score 3.0 and 4.0, the, their newest versions, need a, a minimum of one month of activity. So they may be able to incorporate that account in the score faster, uh, but you only you not only need the account to show in your report, but also to see that activity. So that's why we say if you have a new account or an existing account and you want it to help with your credit scores, you need not only to have the account, but make a small purchase, turn around and pay it full right away. You don't have to carry a balance. You don't even have to wait for the, the creditor to, uh, up to, to send a billing statement. Just uh, use it. Make sure there's activity that will be then reported to Experian that will, will then result in it being able to be included in the scores after a, a few months of activity. So m several things that might be affecting that, not sure, um, but trying to throw some things out there to think about. Uh, little buddy, thanks for inviting your followers. And they say, they're say they saying, don't pay off debt right now. Any reason why? Peachly written. Um, no idea. You know, if, it, it, you know, if it's related to COVID ID, uh, ID. I keep saying that COVID-19. I don't want to keep saying ID. COVID-19, although I'm thinking about ID theft is related to things like what's happening with the virus, I tend to see, and I'm starting to see reports of and hear from people who are saying that there are um, fraudsters out there trying to take advantage of people who are afraid of what's going on, understandably, 
uh, and the, you know, the predators are starting to look for victims. Uh, so that's sad, frustrating, makes me angry. But um, in terms of paying off your debt, if you're in a position that's the best thing to do. So if you're still working, still getting your, your salary, still able to pay your bills on time, try to be as normal as possible and keep paying those debts. That's going to continue to show that you're paying those debts on time, reducing those balances. If you can pay off that debt as we go through this cycle of, uh, of the virus and um, you know, the financial uncertainties, if you could pay off a debt and still have savings, still have be in, in sound financial footing, that reduces the... the um, cost that you have every month, your outflow. So that could be a good thing. Um, so I'm not sure why they're saying don't pay it off if you can. You know, there are stimulus funds becoming available there. Uh, and there are um, programs that lenders are, are helping with in terms of forbearance and deferment that can help protect your credit history. If you are not able to pay those bills uh, as a result of COVID-19 and the implications we're seeing as a result you know, with job loss and, and reduced uh, income, those sorts of things. So, um, you know, if it's, in, if it's related to those kinds of issues that, you know, you've, you can't work as many hours, uh, you have a daughter who's in that situation, uh, you, you uh, have lost a job as a result uh, of, of our response to the virus and trying to stop it, uh, those programs are there, and that could make sense. That it, you know, you don't shouldn't worry about paying off those debts right now if you're in other financial uh, situations. You dictate that. So, um, you know, it, if it's related to that, I could understand it. If it's just because everything's going on, just don't pay your bills. That's probably bad advice because it's going to eventually come back around. So if you're able to, and the economy's going to improve, and you're still going to owe those debts. So if you're able to make those payments, it's going to help you be on better footing when we get through this. Uh, so, you know, that and that's kind of my philosophy. If I can keep paying my bills, I'm very fortunate uh, to work in the in the role I have and to work for a great company. Um, you know, I'm still thankfully employed and um, we're, we're continuing to work hard to help people and support people through this. And I, I'm going to keep paying my bills. So, um, you know, I'm not going to stop paying because there might be might be some government plan that would help me not. I mean, I think that's always bad advice um, to hope that there's something that will help you and, and then not. I've heard people have done that, too, and from them, and they've said it kind of backfired. So make sure you, if you can, do. I mean, I continue to pay. I don't know why they're saying that. Uh, why do we need so much credit past 100? Um not sure that I, I quite understand the question. Um, so, little buddy, if you give me a little clarification, maybe I can help. Um, unless I missed part of the question, I'm not sure I quite follow um, what you're asking. So, a little more detail would help. Uh, other than me, can anyone just look at my report anytime they want? Uh, Navio, absolutely not. Uh, so that's a great question. So other than me, can anyone just look at my report anytime they want? No. There are what we call permissible purposes under federal law that strictly limit who can look at your report. You, as you said, can get your report anytime you want, and it won't affect credit scores, won't affect lending decisions at all. Otherwise, there, there are limitations. So it has to be someone, uh, and I, I won't catch all of them off the top of my head, but they're very specific there has to be a reason to get your report. It can't just be someone who says, I'm curious about what your credit history might be, so I want to look at it. Can't do that. It has to be an application for credit by you. It has to be an existing relationship with a lender who's reviewing their portfolio. If you're applying for a job or a promotion, the, the employer can get a limited version of your credit report if you give them written permission first. Uh, and they do not get credit scores. Employers never get credit scores. That's one of the biggest myths out there. Uh, for insurance purposes has been specified in the law since it was enacted in the early 1970s. Uh, so they use your credit report to determine whether you can pay your premiums on time, for example. Uh, for uh, certain government licenses, things like security clearances. Uh, so very limited in terms of who can look at your report and when. If you say you want to invest in an organization or company. So if I said hey, you know, the, I want to invest a million dollars in your startup. Uh, they could check my credit report 
to make sure I actually have a million dollars, one in my financial background, which wouldn't show in the report, but they could check to say I don't have $2 million in debt I should pay first. I don't have either one of those, so I don't have a million dollars to put in a in a startup, and I don't have $2 million in debt either, thankfully, on either side. Uh, so, uh, But they can check in that case because it's a financial decision. Uh, so very limited. You know, if you have, you know, the thing that I've heard is an ex-partner who wants to look at your credit report, they're not allowed to do that. Uh, you know, if they pose as you and provide your information, they're committing identity theft and fraud, uh, and they can be prosecuted for that. Uh, so, no, not anyone can get your report. There are very limited circumstances uh, as to who can see that report. Now, if there's a court order or federal grand jury subpoena, another example, uh, of course, we're going to provide a report. But if a law enforcement agency comes to us and says, I want X number of credit reports of these people, we're going to say, show us the subpoena. Well, we're not giving them to you because we are not a government agency and they have a legal obligation to subpoena that information before we will disclose it. So, um, you know, number of, very limited in terms of who can get your report. Um, Tina LaRoe, Christina, good to see you on board. Um, she works with me, so i um, always glad to have her with me, keeping me honest, I hope. Um, maybe an account was closed. Yeah, that's a possibility. Uh, how to fix a delinquent account. So Shoney628, uh, so a delinquent account just means that there's a late payment or multiple late payments. You can't really fix it if it's accurate, right? So you, what you can do is bring that account current. So catch up on those payments. You know, if you're behind, if you missed one payment, you'll have to make two payments to bring it current and then continue to make that payment on time going forward. And eventually those late payments will fall off the report. Or those uh, delinquency is just another word for a late payment. Uh, so uh, time is a factor. You know, once you've caught up, that late payment's going to stay for seven years from the date of the missed payment, but eventually it will fall off. The further in the past it occurred, the less effect it has on scores. So, you know, if, it, if the late payment was last month, it's probably going to have a significant uh, impact on, on the number on your, on your credit score. If it was six years ago, less impact. If everything else has been current since, may have very minimal impact. So catching up is important, and then time uh, to, to let it get older and older and eventually come off the report uh, is kind of the key. Um, Scooby Dooby 2, I have a few questions. Can I call in? I'm a recent graduate. Um, actually, if you have questions here that are general, I, you know, we love to share because if you have questions, I know other people will have the same ones, and that's the whole goal. If you're just joining, I'm Rod Griffin. I'm Senior Director of Consumer Education and Advocacy for Experian. This is Credit Chat. I try to be here 1.30 Central, 2.30 Eastern, just to answer your questions about credit reporting and credit scoring and fraud and ID theft, and to talk about a lot of the unique things we're going through right now with COVID-19 and uh, you know how are we getting through this together and, and talk about those issues. So if you have questions, feel free to ask. If you have an issue with your report uh, and need help with it specifically, you can dispute the information. Go to experian.com slash dispute. It's free. If you don't have a current copy of a report, we'll give you one at no cost right there on, on the site. If you already do and it's current, you can put in the report number and it will pull up at, right there for you. And you can follow the instructions to dispute. You'll also have a toll-free telephone number to connect with a representative who can answer your question specifically to your credit report. And that's kind of the challenge. More than 220 million people with credit reports, they're all unique. They're all a bit different. So it's really impossible for me to say just in, a, in this kind of environment, you know, here's specifically what's happened. But in general, the things that affect us are, are pretty much the same. So we can share information, to at least give you a starting point, I hope. Um, they said, contact you. It's a credit card that's open. Yeah, so um, again, it, and it's old. So if you go to the dispute page, experian.com slash dispute, uh, get a copy of your credit report. So it sounds like somebody's telling you about it. Maybe you haven't seen your report. So if you, you can get a free report uh, at experian.com slash dispute, if you need to dispute, you can get a free report at annualcreditreport.com once every 12 months, uh, and you'll be able to see right away what's there, put in that report number if you go back to experience.com slash dispute. So a couple of ways to get a free report, make sure it's there. And old is kind of relative. You know, what is the is the late payment old? How old is it? If it's more than seven years from the date it was reported, it should come off the report. Uh, if it's less than that, it's still going to stay, but will have less and less impact on scores the older it gets. So 
um, look at that uh, as, as a good place to start. Um, looking at your first credit card, I've looked around, but I have some questions on making choice. Yeah. Um, so can Colin join the chat? You can absolutely join the chat here. We already joined the chat. So on Twitter, um, and this is live. So I'm seeing your questions. It's a live chat uh, on here on Periscope. So feel free to ask. I'll do my best to answer. I can't recommend because, again, it's one of those very specific things. Experian does offer a credit card matching service. If you go to Experian.com, you can learn more about that. If you enroll in our monitoring services, uh, you, you, you will get offers uh, for matches to the specific things you say you're looking for. So we can help in that way, potentially. Uh, if you are trying to build your credit score and improve it, Experian Boost might help. We talk about that here often. Uh, you can add your positive cell phone payments, your positive utility bill payments to your credit report to help increase your score. Uh, you can learn more about that at Experian.com slash boost. It's a free service as well, permission-based. So if you choose to do that uh, you, and you change your mind, you can tell us to stop. So learn more about Boost. I, that can help if you're new. Uh, and it sounds like as a, a, a potentially a student, uh, a young young consumer, essentially, you may have very little credit history. So Experian Boost actually is really beneficial to people in your situation. That's one of the target groups for that kind of service is that it helps people who have what we call thin credit files or very short credit histories show that they are good credit risk, even though they lack that traditional credit history. So it might be something worth looking into for you. Um, so might take a look at that. Um, contacted the credit card company first, said to reach out to you. I haven't had it for years. Um, you want to actually finish answering the question he's currently on. Um, Yes, that's why it was said you knew immediately. Yeah, so yeah, I can only do one thing at a time and then I fall behind um, and then get confused. So we don't want to do that. But contact credit card company said it was reach out to you. You've had it for years. So yeah, so um, Ashadi, it's, it, it, take a look at your credit report because it sounds like if the account's open, if there's a late payment, um, you'll be able to see it right away and you'll be able to see how old it is and get it resolved. If you've never missed a payment, it's, or it's the first time you've had this happen, talk, yeah, have, throw you back to your lender, but um, they may be able to say, hey, take it off because life does happen. Most of the time they recognize that. Um, but get your report, take a look at it. You'll probably see right away what the issue is and be able to get it resolved uh, and dispute, go through the dispute. We call it a dispute process. Sometimes it's just, this needs to be updated. Um, and here's what the issue is. So it's a dispute technically. Uh, and we can then go back to the source of the information and they then have to respond uh, by law to our requests for information. They have to check their files and then tell us, yes, it should be updated. Yes, it should uh, be removed or it should remain the same. And then if you disagree with the results, you can add what we call a statement of dispute, which we strongly encourage. It says, I disagree and this is why and let you tell your side of the story. So uh, important to do that. Um, to have them removed electronically. Yeah, So and, and it's usually pretty easy to do. Um, I'm trying to see if we're, just want the old stuff off. Yeah, and so it's, and that dispute process is usually the easiest. You can also talk to our representatives. Um, you know, it, it, the, the, you'll be provided with a toll-free telephone number. They're here in, um, in Texas, actually. Uh, so when you talk to them, so in the U.S., uh, so... And in time, that will that will come off. It's it's patience is hard. Um, Chocolate girl twenty one. Thanks for joining. Um, and then I missed something somewhere. He <laughs> so. Um, and I'm just trying to go back and make sure I'm catching everything. Um, and if I miss, it's not because I'm trying to ignore your question. It's just because I've I'm trying to answer and I've fallen behind. So. Um, how long do things show on your credit report once it's paid in full? So underground, uh, Dre. So once you've paid an account in full, it should be updated to show paid or paid in full. Now, if it's a credit card, it may show closed, uh, paid, so closed paid, and you would have a zero balance. Once an account is paid in full, if it's never been late, that account will remain for 10 years from the, the close date of the account because we keep that positive account information longer than we keep negative information. So a closed account with zero balance with no late payment history means you're going to keep that history for 10 years so that you don't lose that. 
and it can help you in rebuilding and maintaining your credit history. If you, you know, have a good, strong credit history already and you have other accounts open, by the time that account then falls off of the report, those other accounts will have the length of history uh, there to offset it. And so we keep that longer. So 10 years, if it's a closed account or a paid account that's never been late. If you have an account that's had late payments, those late payments will fall off seven years from the date of the delinquency. And the account will then remain for 10 years with the positive information from the paid date. So the late stuff will eventually come out of the, of the account and it's still be there to help. Uh, if you have an account that's been charged off because you've fallen behind, they've charged it off as, uh, as a loss, never brought it current again, sold the collections, that account will be deleted seven years from the original delinquency date of that debt along with any collection account that went with it. Collections are deleted at the same time. So we treat collections as a continuation of the original debt. So um, important to know. And, and collection agencies must report the original delinquency date from the original account. They can't change that date. So you can work with them, you can talk with them, you can pay them, you can negotiate with them, and they cannot change the date that it would come off the report. So there's a lot of misunderstanding about that. That doesn't reset the clock when you talk to a collector. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, there is another law called the Fair, Fair Debt Collections Practices Act and state laws that can affect the ability of a collection agency to continue to try to collect if you work with them. I'm not an expert in that area, uh, but from a credit reporting standpoint, you can work with them. It does not change what the Fair Credit Reporting Act says uh, in terms of the original delinquency date. So you can have a debt, and the account could come off of the credit report, they may still be able to try to collect. So it's important to know what's in that report uh, and know that it's not there. And once it's gone, it can't come back uh, if it's the result of um, the, that time frame. So um, hope that's helpful. Um, um, Morrow910, like Martin09, thanks for joining. Uh, credit score, you need to become a first time homeowner. So it, it, it usually it depends. <laughs> so that's kind of the answer on every credit reporting question, unfortunately, a credit scoring question. Um, what's the right answer? Because it depends on your individual credit history, along with things like the assets you have available, your income, neither of which are part of a credit report. Uh, so if you have a good credit score, 700 or above, you, you may qualify, you may not get the best terms or rates at that level. Uh, if you have a 750 or above, generally we see people get the best terms for a mortgage loan, uh, but that's also coupled with things like how much you can afford, how much you need to borrow. Uh, are you paying what they call points, which is just money to pay down the interest rate, a point or two or three, or an interest rate point. So lots of factors get involved uh, in terms of the type of loan that you're getting. Is it a, a, you know, a VA loan or an uh, FHA loan or the kinds of government sponsored loans or is it a, you know, a non-government sponsored loan? A lot of things that go into uh, that mortgage loan and what scores and what other um, financial issues need to be addressed. So talk to your, so all of that said, the best thing to do is talk to a mortgage lender, uh, you know, your bank or your credit union, ask them to help you get pre-qualified uh, which will give you a sense of where you stand in terms of how much you can afford and how much they would approve or get pre-approved, which means that they'll, they'll tell you this is how much we will write a check for uh, with your financial information and situ situation, and that can help uh, you know exactly where you are and what you need to do. So um, you know, it just depends on your, your situation, but generally, you know, 700 and above, you may, will probably qualify, 750 and higher typically will get the best rates. Um, look fairly certain. Um, New York Zeppelin, thanks for joining, being here. Good to see you. Uh, Peachy written, can your debt be sold over and over again to different creditors? Uh, yes. So it, it, the creditors will, if you've defaulted on a loan, it's charged off, a, they will sell or transfer that debt to a collection agency. Um, a Collector will then potentially, if they decide they're not going to collect, they may sell that debt. On your credit report, you should be able to track that history. So your original account should so, should should show, it's hard to say today, should show charged off and then sold to or transferred to in most cases. So you can see exactly what went to 
You will then see that collection agency and transferred from or purchased from, acquired from uh, on your credit report. So you can track the history of that debt. Usually once a collector, if they, they sell that uh, account, that collector would fall off and you would see the new and you wouldn't see the old collector, but you might see transfer to, sold to, and that history of that debt as well um, on that report. But it doesn't mean it starts all over again. Every one of those collection agencies, if they sell it to more than one, still have to report the original delinquency date from the original account. So if, they, if the original creditor charges off that account as a loss and sells it to a collection agency, and that collection agency sells it to 10 more collection agencies, that original account, and every one of those collection agencies should come off the report at the same time because those collection agencies have to report that same original delinquency date from that original account. So that's the, the, the thing to understand. Collection accounts uh, are deleted at the same time. All of them would be deleted at the same time as the original, original debt if you see more than one. Uh, they cannot change that original delinquency date. Uh, that's the key. So um, they don't start all over again. Um, so thank you all so much. I mean, this is, half hour always goes really fast and really great questions today. Thank you so much for being part of the chat. I plan to be here on Thursday, 1.30 Central, 2.30 Eastern again. So join me here on Periscope for a credit chat. Also join us tomorrow, 2 o'clock Central, 3 Eastern for our Wednesday Twitter chat. You can learn more at ex.pn slash credit chat. We're going to talk about, and we have a series that we're starting, uh, started last week, to talk about how we manage our finances through this crisis uh, and what do we do to make sure that we're covering our, our bills, what resources available through COVID-19. And there's some changes there with the CARES Act and things happening. So join us on Twitter tomorrow, 2 o'clock Central, 3 Eastern. See me on Thursday again. I hope to see you here with, with your questions, 1.30 Central, 2.30 Eastern. I'm also starting a live Facebook chat on Fridays. You'll see more about that and hear more about that as well. I hope to start this Friday. So watch for more information there, um, 11.30 Central, 12.30 Eastern. So hope to see you all there as well. Take care, everyone. Please stay well, stay safe, and we'll talk to you very soon.